Welcome to day 12 of the Yandel program. It is a Thursday. Uh, today we tried, we headed into Yad Vashem. We began uh, with a lecture by Professor Gideon Grief looking at Auschwitz, the death factory. This was all about the logistics of how they built and produced a mechanism uh, for murdering people as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, so it was a pretty heavy start to the day. Uh, Professor Grief's um, main body of work is looking at the Zonda Commandos. These were Jews who were selected to help run the facility. Uh, and they had received, uh, because of the work that they did, uh, it was assumed they were collaborators. And Professor Grief did not believe this to be the case. He went and found uh, about 80 to 100 of them survived. And by the time he had done research and tracked down um, some of them, there were 31 that he managed to interview for his, uh, for his books, and one of which has been turned into a movie recently, Son of Saul, which won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film. And, uh, yeah, he talked all about um, just the, the systematic fashion, the technical ability to do such a horrific thing uh, and how these poor men lived basically hell on earth, some, one of them for two and a half years, uh, in a factory where uh, uh, eventually the Hungarian Jews had been left at home, basically, until Hungary, which used to be an ally of Germany, was uh, invaded and all of their Jews, 500, I think, odd thousand of them, were, were sent and uh, minimum uh, 10 to 20,000 were killed daily uh, in Auschwitz. Uh, and these uh, Sonder commandos uh, had to walk them in, pretend they were, they were being showered, collect their goods and then, and then collect the bodies at the end. So heartbreaking start to the day. Uh, we then looked at the Auschwitz album. This was an album that was found after the war uh, by a survivor of Auschwitz, and she kept it and eventually donated it to Yad Vashem. What it is is two SS uh, officers, we don't know why, took over 200 photos of a transport coming from Bilke, uh, a town um, in the country escapes me, and arriving at Auschwitz and kind of the selection process taking place. And we looked at how you could use that as an educational unit to show the process uh, without showing the, um, you know, the gory details, so showing that it's possible uh, to use uh, sources like this um, uh, to, to kind of to have an empathetic look at the situation um, without looking at the, you know, the the absolute gore um, and the, you know, the shock tactics um, that, yeah, they're just not needed for um, for what you're like you're seeking to do from a from an educational point of view. So that was an interesting um, finish up to that. Um, after that, uh, we headed to the children's memorial, uh, and this was a particularly moving. Um, part of the day so you, you walk in it's a very dark room uh, they estimate that uh, if, we're, if we're saying uh, children are under the age of 18 uh, that 1.5 million children were murdered in the Holocaust and you walk into this uh, dark room and they have five candles uh, set up there burning and uh, just this um, a whole range of mirrors set up at different angles, so it looks like uh, m just a million stars um, all twinkling in the candlelight. Uh, you look out over this dark um, area, and uh, and the names of children, 1,500 children uh, who were murdered in the Holocaust are read out um, in different languages uh, with their ages, and uh, it's 1% of the children who were murdered. Uh, so that was quite quite moving, affected most of the people in the group. Uh, following that, we looked at a memorial um, uh, to 
uh, a man uh, whose name escapes me. Um, I'll put it in the in the little uh, description. Uh, he was uh, he ran an orphanage in uh, in the Warsaw ghetto, uh, and uh, yeah, he ran two orphanages: a Gentile orphanage and a Jewish orphanage. Uh, before the war, after uh, it had started, he was forced to close down the other one. He went into the ghetto with the Jewish one, restarted it up again, looked after these children. Uh, when an action came and they were sent to be de deported, somebody said to him, we can get you out. And, uh, and he chose to get on the train with the children from his orphanage, um, fully knowing that they were going to Treblinka. Uh, and he went there with them, and he was he was gassed in Treblinka with them. Uh, so there's a, a very yeah moving um, memorial to him, a statue of him with twelve children, and he's got his arm kind of around them, um, with big cuts in his arm to show that he sought to protect them, but he, he couldn't. Um, and there's twelve for the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, following that, we had another meeting with the survivor. Her name was Martha Weiss. She was in the uh, in Auschwitz and was acquainted with uh, Joseph Mengele, the doctor. Uh, her sister developed tuberculosis. Um, she was allowed to visit him or her in there. He he allowed that. Uh, she was eventually liberated from um, from Auschwitz. They got sent on a death march, and very soon after that, the Russian soldiers came and, and liberated the camp. And uh, she and her sister hitchhiked from Auschwitz in Poland all the way back to Czechoslovakia. And at the ages of, I think, 10 and 12 or 10 and 13. And then the family went back to Australia. And she emigrated to Israel in 1998 with her husband. Uh, so it was wonderful meeting her. And following that, uh, we had a discussion on uh, the new anti-Semitism the rise of anti-Semitism in the world, and this uh, this idea, this question of, is it a uh, continuation of the old? Is it is it just um, continuing those old um, anti-Semitic um, stereotypes that, that we see, or is it a new phenomenon? How can we think through that with our students? How can we look at uh, similarities, differences, and talk about them, and and how do we how do we react to that. Uh, so that was very helpful. Um, following that, we came back, definitely needed a night out after that just to get my mind off things. So I went out uh, with Beth and Jocelyn and uh, and actually had a kebab uh, and looked for some swimmers because we we're going to be going into the Dead Sea uh, and, and I needed some thongs. So I bought some thongs and, uh, and I'm just going to wear some shorts into the Dead Sea, which is happening on Saturday, going to Masada and the Dead Sea. Uh, tomorrow, after the half day at Yad Vashem, heading to Bethlehem. So really looking forward to that, the Church of the Nativity. And uh, and then the, uh, coming back, and we're heading into the, back into the Old City, and then down to the Garden of Gethsemane. So that should be really interesting. Uh, looking forward to that. And signing off for tonight.